Okay. Can we start? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, everyone present here. I, Dr. Sadaf Khan, Assistant Professor, Faculty of Law, Integral University. On behalf of the entire Faculty of Law, I warmly welcome you all in the 30 days interdisciplinary faculty development program on emerging trends in administration of criminal justice system and forensic science. Today, we begin our technical session as for the second module, concentrating on the procedural aspect of the criminal justice system. The resource person for today's session is the person totally involved in the field, Mr. Jitendra Kumar Divedi, Deputy Director, Northeastern Police Academy, on the topic, process of police and determining corpus delicti. I take this privilege to warmly welcome our today's resource person. Sir has completed his bachelor's in science, followed by LLB from Sultanpur, Uttar Pradesh. He also has a master's degree in criminal law, criminology and forensic science from NLU Jodhpur and holds a postgraduate diploma in human rights. Before his selection in 2008 as an assistant director at a Northeastern Police Academy by UPSC, he had practiced as an advocate in session court from 1997 to 2008. He had dealt with cases in criminal, civil, revenue, matrimonial matters, and claim petitions. He is also a visiting faculty at various institutions, such as the Meghalaya Judicial Academy, Wildlife Crime, Petrol, uh, Crime Control Bureau, MPA, and others, and has been course director and conducted courses in domains like crime against women, human trafficking, RTI, juvenile justice, overseas training attachment with Singapore Police Force, and ATA course on CBRN by US Embassy. As yet, approx 500 deputy SPs, SPs and approx 4,000 SIs have been trained under his guidance. Sir has also been awarded with the Union Home Minister Medal for the excellence in police training in the year 2018-19 and has also been awarded with the director's commendation certificate and this gold silver for outstanding performance. Now, without wasting much time, I would like to invite our today's resource person. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. And it is indeed a pleasure for uh, me to be here with all of you. I think you can uh, switch off your mic, otherwise it is going. Yeah. So as the topic which is allotted to me is the process of police and determining corpus delicti. So in this presentation, actually, this session cannot be covered in one, one hour because it includes a lot of things of forensic medicine, forensic science, in law, and other aspects of criminal justice system. However, we will try to get a general understanding of all these topics and the process which is being followed by the police in investigation and also we will try to understand the concept of corpus delicti or sometimes we refer it or we generally say it that this is the corpus delicti without wasting much time we will go with the sessions like this that uh, we will uh, i'll try to complete this session and we will have a question answer session in the uh, question answer session in the last so <clears throat> let us go with the Corpus Delicti. So, Corpus Delicti, as it says, as it says, is a term from Western jurisprudence, and it refers to principle that a crime must be proved to have occurred 
before a person can be convicted of committing that crime. So which means that there must be some evidence, there must be some evidence which suggests that there is a specific injury to some person or there is a violation of any law, any statutes which amounts to a crime. Further, it is also called as corpora delicti. Corpora delicti or corpus delicti generally refer as the body of the crime, or we also can say that the body of the evidence in the Anglo-American legal system, the concept has its outgrowth in several principles and many jurisdictions hold as a legal rule that a defendant or the accused or alone or the confession alone is not sufficient evidence to prove the accused person's guilt beyond reasonable doubt. And a corollary to this rule is that an accused cannot be convicted solely upon the testimony of an accomplice. But so far as the Indian legal system is concerned, we all aware about that there are so many things, so many times what had happened that there is no any evidence, no any evidence to the crime. So sometime, sometime it happens that in order to find out the best evidence or to present the best evidence, even the testimony of an accomplice, accomplice may be found admissible in a criminal court to punish the accused person for that purpose for that purpose we can refer to we can refer to the provisions of indian evidence act also and the provisions of crpc also where in section 306 307 and 308 they talk about approval where an accomplice can be made as an approver by the police and when an accomplice is made as an approver by the police the accomplice becomes a prosecution witness and his testimony is admissible. So far, corpus delicti is concerned. As I said, that it is the body of the crime, sorry, body of the evidence. There are there must be some evidence. For example, in a case of murder, in a case of murder, which is punishable as of now in section 302 of the Indian Penal Code, what is the most important piece of the evidence to establish that? there is a crime of murder obviously it is the body itself it is the corpus itself which is and on that body on the body the nature of injury is found on the body from the nature of injuries you can derive the intention that what is the intention of that person intention of the person who has inflicted the injury so as in various case laws the supreme court has said that the how intention can be gathered intention can be gathered from the circumstances intention can be gathered from the nature of the injuries caused intention can be gathered from the weapons used in commission of the crime further corpus delicti in cases of arson if there is a remain burnt remain of a house that is a case where you can say that it is a case of arson similarly in case of property offenses what is the body of the crime what are the evidence evidence that it is a crime against the property and the property becomes here corpus delicti so corpus delicti is a term which is being used which which is being used for the purpose of representing representing here in our Indian law that the evidence, what are the evidence which are required for proving a crime and how the crime, how the crime is being or criminal is being taken to the justice. What is the process being followed by the police in bringing the criminal to the justice? Proceeding further. Corpus delicti requires at minimum, as I said earlier, that is, there must be a specific injury and there must be some intention, knowing act as the source of the injury. Further, the phrase corpus delicti might be used to mean the physical object upon which the crime was committed, such as, as I said earlier, the dead body or the remains of the house, or it might signify the act itself. That is, whether it is a case of murder, it is a case of robbery, it is a case of bakati, it is a case of rape. 
talking about to the rape what is the best evidence which you may be able to find in case of the rape number 1 the victim itself if you are if victim is there there may be a lot of evidence you may be able to find on the victim's body it includes the testimony of the witness further it includes the nature and the injuries found on the on the body of the witness the material the material or the foreign material found on the body of the witness and the corporate delicti we here is uh, we here used to describe as the evidence that proves that a crime has been committed so with this short introduction we are proceeding further that if there is a crime how to how to connect it with the criminal and also how to bring the criminal to the justice so we will start as you are all aware about that so far as the police is concerned the police comes into operation at two stages since the primary duty of the police is prevention of crime second second investigation of crime third bringing the offender to the justice by way of arresting him producing him before the court completing the investigation and then pursuing the case till the trial is finished so as we and you can see on the slides that every crime is having four stages i i am aware or i know that you must be aware of all these stages that is the intention preparation commission and attempt so far as intention is intention is concerned intention is not defined anywhere intention is not punishable you are having an intention to kill me unless you do something extra to kill me that is not punishable you keep your intention with yourself you share your intention with somebody else and you agree with that intention intention do something it will become the conspiracy and then the second stage comes of the preparation preparation is not always punishable but in some cases uh, pre uh, preparation is punishable for example preparation to commit dakati is punishable preparation to wage war against the government of india or against the friendly state uh, against the governments which are having friendly relations with india is punishable attempt is always punishable commission is always punishable so these are the four stages of the crime so far definition of the intention is concerned as i said the intention is nowhere defined but to establish the crime to establish the crime the first thing which is to be which is required to be done by the police is that whether there was some intention to do, to do this particular act for example as we all are aware about the doctrine of the guilty mind that is actus non facit rem nishi mens it iria or an act done without a guilty mind is not a crime but we also know that this mag this maxim has no application in the indian law because in the ipc which we are going which we are following as of now and which is going to be changed in few months most probably by uh, by the end of the december we will have bns bhartiya nyay sanhita and bnss that is bhartiya nagrik suraksha sanhita and bhartiya sach adhiniyam so here what had happened is that all the general exceptions are separately defined so hardly there is any application of mens rea so we say intention is the internal expect internal expectation of the consequences of the act intended to be done so if i stab you with something on your vital parts of the body then it means my intention was to cause death similarly i have prepared myself i have arranged some weapon reached the stage of 
preparation, try to do something, becomes attempt, and then if attempt succeeds, it becomes commission, and commission is always an offense, though, as I said, attempt also in preparation in certain cases also. So when it comes to the police, that before police registers the FIR, police has to go with the tedious task. See, police is something with that it is very diff very easy to blame the police that you come to the police and the police has not uh, police is waiting police is examining police is not registering your information but it's actually not uh, actually not like this first thing when you go the police will evaluate your information the police will try to find out okay, that whether any link is missing any circumstance is missing which later on becomes which later on becomes a reason for acquittal in the criminal case, for acquittal in the criminal case. So therefore, police in general took some time, used to took some time in registration of the FIR. So far as police procedure to establish crime is concerned. It starts with information. Information is given to the police in police station information results in fir fir when fir is registered investigation starts and investigation generally we say it ends with police report but actually not we as a police officer we used to say that submission of the charge sheet or submission of the police report it's only a beginning it is not an end because whatever we write whatever we present it goes up to the supreme court and may may go beyond that also so far as procedure to establish a crime that a criminal has committed a crime is concerned the procedure to be adopted is the same procedure is the procedure which is given in chapter 12 of the criminal procedure code now there are a lot of things that chapter 12. If we go to the CRPC, we can easily divide the CRPC into three parts. One is, which is basically applicable to the police. Second part, which is applicable for the courts. And the third part, which is applicable for the police also and for the courts also. So generally it is chapter five and the chapter 12, which took parts in crime investigation. Chapter 5 starts with section 41 and chapter 12 start with section 154. In section 154, which is basically on the main chapter in which entire procedure for investigation is con contained. But remember, dear friends, that investigation is not alone IPC. It is not alone CRPC. It is not alone Evidence Act. It includes IPC, CRPC, invest, CRPC, ev evidence, crim criminology, forensic science, forensic, forensic medicine, and so many other things. If somebody has to be a good investigator, he must have a good knowledge of all these subjects. Therefore, a police personnel is being trained in near about 22 subjects. However, FIR starts with 154. Then it goes to 155, 156, 157, and ended with investigation ends with 173. Police reports in 173, either it is a charge sheet or it is a final, final report. We will discuss in detail in the upcoming slides, in the upcoming slides. Starting with types of information. FIR is the basis of any criminal case. Whenever there is any crime, there must be an information. So what happened when information comes to the police station? The first duty of the officer in charge of the police station is to find it out that whether the information given discloses the commission of the cognizable offense or the commission of the non-cognizable offense. As you all know, you are aware that cognizable offense are those offenses in which Police has power to start investigation without the order of magistrate. FIR can be registered. FIR can be registered, and a person can be arrested without warrant. Similarly, 
non cog offense is opposite to this that police can register a non cognizable report in 155 or uh, and refer the informant to the magistrate for asking or seeking permission to conduct the investigation police has no power in non cog offense to arrest a person without warrant further before starting with a fire practically what is happening practically what is happening is when somebody goes to the police station and and gives an information there has to has have to have a gd entry general general diary entry general diary entry is the mirror of the police station it is a 24 hours running process after every two hours gd is being written whatever is happening what is happening what had had what have had happened everything is reflected in the general diary that is and general diary is written by whom general diary generally it is written by the either by the iu or by the ocs so if you go to the definition of the oc you will see that the officer in charge of the police station never sees never sleeps he is always on duty for 24 hours into seven days into 365 days into till the date of his retirement so the first thing is to be a general diary entry what he will write in the general diary entry in general diary entry he will write if i am if i speak in hindi in general diary he will write ki aaj dinang itne ko ye aadmi itne samay is phala vyakti ke sath thane par aaya aur inhone ek likhit tehreer thane mein diya jisse ki cognizable offense ka hona paya ja raha hai fir register karne ki prakriya jari hai in other words in english today on so and so date at so and so, so and so date and this time mr so and so came to the police station and has submitted a written information which discloses the commission of a cognizable offense fir is being registered the first thing which is to be done is the general diary entry which proves that the informant came to the police station now there are there are earlier there were lot of case laws which we are having conflicting views whether it is the case case uh, laws of the high courts or the judgments of the supreme courts whether the police is bound to register the fir when they receive information which discloses the commission of the cognizable offense in some of the cases in, of the supreme court supreme court said ki, yes they can some of the cases supreme court said you know they can go for the preliminary inquiry so the issue was issue was or is finally settled in case of Lalita Kumari versus the state of UP, 2014, page number one, Supreme Court case, uh, volume number one, Supreme Court cases criminal, page number 524, constitutional bench decision of the Supreme Court, where the Supreme Court said that if information discloses commission of the cognizable offense, police has no option other than to register the FIR. So the issue was issue is finally settled. But again, the Supreme Court said that if if it is it is not clear that there is a cognizable offense committed then the police may go for conducting a preliminary inquiry and if preliminary inquiry is conducted if preliminary inquiry is conducted it has to be completed within 15 days and then the time was extended to the six weeks further Supreme Court also laid down in this case that what are the what are the cases in which preliminary inquiry can be conducted. Further, Supreme Court held that the purpose of preliminary inquiry is not to test the veracity of the information. It is only to find out or to ascertain whether there is any, whether there is commission of any cognizable offense or not. And if it is if it is found that there is a cognizable offense, police has no option other than to register the FIR. So the long line issue of preliminary inquiry and registration of FIR is finally settled by the Supreme Court in this case. So far as the person who can lodge FIR is concerned, the general law is that anybody can go to the police station and give information about the commission of the cognizable offense. And it includes informant who is an aggrieved person or somebody on his behalf he can be an eyewitness also he can be a person who has heard something 
from somebody else that is as an hearsay account but when the information in police station is given on the basis of some hearsay account then the person has to disclose the source of his information further accused is also a competent witness competent person sorry competent person to register the lodge the fir he can also go to the police station and lodge a confessional fir against himself further power is also given to the officer in charge of police station in section 157 of the crpc that such on his own information he can register the fir which we call it somoto fir somoto fir and then obviously under the orders of the magistrate in 15663 the magistrate in 15663 the magistrate is having power to order the officer in charge of the police station to register a fir and investigate so the generally uh, the process of investigation which is start with registration of a fir which is start with the registration of a fir and we think that it registration of fir is very easy no my dear friends registration of fir is at all not easy before registration of the fir the officer in charge of police station has to go and to connect to bring the evidence it is a known fact that an admitted fact that fir is not an encyclopedia fir need not to contain so many details but for the police officer it is not that much easy the police officer he has to bring at least the minimum evidence in the fir so that it can be proved prima facie that there is some material exist that the accused person has prima facie committed a crime and for that it is his duty this is the duty of the officer in charge of the police station to make the fir comprehensive and how the fir is being made comprehensive there is a 11 w theory of making a fir comprehensive a fir it can be against known person a fir it can be against unknown person when the accused person is known there is not much challenge to the to the police they have only to do their conventional things and bring the evidence on the record and submit the charge sheet or the fir whatever it is it will be but the bigger challenge before the police is then when the fir is against unknown person when the case is blind then the investigative skills of the investigating officer will be on task will be taken on task to complete the investigation and to find out the real culprit so as i said that there is a 11 w's theory of making fir comprehensive 11 w's theory of making fir comprehensive the first w what information has come to convey which means the moment the police officer has officer has received the information he has to analyze if whether any offense is being made out if yes of which law if yes it is ipc or it is some other act then whether only ipc is involved or some special or minor acts are also involved then second what are the sections to be imposed the third whether there is any other ingredient of the crime which is being missing then in what capacity second w in what capacity the person who has come to give the information or the laws the fir what is his status in the case whether he is the victim whether he is a witness or whether he is somebody else then who committed the crime whether the accused is known whether the accused is unknown against whom the crime was committed whether it is against the person whether it is against the property if it is against the person whether he is alive or whether he is injured injured if it is against the property then what kind of property is that against which the crime was committed then when that is the time where place of occurrence why what was the motive which may how actually it had happened witnesses whether there 
was any witness to the crime what was taken away in case of property offenses or in cases of offenses against person or property mixed offenses which we say whether there is anything taken away and in the last what are the traces which are left by the accused person before fleeing from the scene of the crime so these are the 11 w's which is being taken into the consideration while registering the fir now moving further in on your screen this is the fir of bhagat singh assembly bomb blast case this is written in persian language we try to translate it but we could not because it is so old and we haven't had a translation of this fir of bhagat singh assembly bomb blast case this is fir of mahatma gandhi assassination case originally written written in urdu with persian word on the other side you can see a legible copy of the original fir of the mahatma gandhi assassination case coming to the translation of this fir as you can say you can see here that this this is the fir dand prakriya sanhita ki dhara 154 ke adhin report police dwara pragya apradhon ki pratham suchna as you can see report ki tarikh was samay suchna dene wale ka naam apradh aur dhara thane se ghatna sthal ki duri aur disha apradhi ka naam evam sambandhit karvai going to the last page second page of this fir i will just read few lines which says that muljim ko mai pistol ke pakad liya gaya mahatma ji ko behoshi ki halat mein uthakar birla house ke rehayshi kamre mein le gaye mahatma ji usi waqt swargwas ho gaye police mujrim ko thana par le gayi mr anil mehta ke signature karwai police is waqia ki jankari paakar mai birla house pahuncha महात्मा गांधी की लाश बिरला हाउस कमरा नंबर तीन में पाई गई श्री नंदलाल मेहता साहब मिले जिन्होंने बयान वाला तहरीर कराया पढ़कर सुनाया दुरुस्त तस्लीम किया नकल दी गई मुलजिम के मुताबिक मालूम हुआ कि एएसआई साहब थाना में ले गए हैं सूरते जुर्म 302 सौ दो ताजीराते हिंद पाई जाकर फर्द बयान मुंदर्जा तरतीब इब्तदाई रिपोर्ट थाना तुगलक रोड भेजा गया मैं मसरूफ दर, दरियाफ्त तफ्तीश हूँ स्पेशल रिपोर्ट अफसरान अजीज को थाना से रवाना की, जा, की जाएगी दस कदम अंग्रेजी चुनाचे हस आमद रिपोर्ट इब्तदाई की इतला मुंदर्जा बुजुर्ग मजकूर दर्ज रजिस्टर की, जा, की जाकर मिसल नकल बराए तफ्तीश व असल तहरीर बयान शमूलियत कार्रवाई असीर नंद श्री जस डी एस पी जसवंत सिंह एट्सेट्रा सो इन दिस केस विच इज अलासिकल केस ऑफ असिनेशन ऑफ महात्मा गांधी you can see that police officer has taken all the care all the care to make the fir comprehensive by applying the doctrine of 11 w's theory of 11 w's and in this way fir is being registered as we can see that a lot of this uh, fir was originally in urdu written with persian words but the trend goes today also in up mp delhi even today the fir is being registered in and lot of words urdu and persian words are being used in the investigation as well as uh, in registration of fir and in trial process too so what was the corpus delicti in this case the corpus delicti was the corpus of rashtrapita mahatma gandhi what are the evidences which we will get from that body the evidence number 1 the body itself is an evidence it is the corpus deceased marks of injuries and when the body was body if a person is sent body of person is sent for the post mortem then the definitely depending upon the nature of the weapon used if it is the firearm injury then you may get the bullets from the dead body if it is some other kind of the injuries than injury marks etc 
This is a fire of Indira Gandhi assassination case. I won't go much. I have just kept it for your uh, perusal only. That in this way, a fire in Mahatma Gandhi case, assassination, sorry, Indira Gandhi assassination case was registered and it was much more elaborate. It was much more elaborate. Coming to the investigation, which is the most important job of the police officer. In investigation, in investigation, Investigation, as it is defined in Section 2H of the Criminal Procedure Code, it is said that investigation is includes all the process for collection of evidence conducted by a police officer or by any person other than magistrate authorized by magistrate. As in our country, in India, we followed adversarial form of criminal justice system, and we are not following inquisitorial form of criminal justice system where the magistrate is also authorized to investigate. But here, as from the investigation, it is clear that magistrate is having power to authorize the order the investigation. He can order investigation, even he can order a private person to con civilian to conduct the investigation, but he himself has no power to conduct the investigation. Generally, as it is held by the Supreme Court in case of H.N. Rishabud versus State of NCT Delhi, AIR 1955, Supreme Court, page number 196, the steps of investigation, which includes proceeding to the scene of crime, ascertainment of facts and circumstances of the case, collection of evidence, discovery and arrest of offender, and in last, formation of opinion in the form of charge sheet or in the form of final reports investigation is as uh, is not simple as it looks like as you can see that there are a lot of things involved on the screen you can see a roof and on the screen uh, in, on that roof you can see a lot of blood so if an investigator if an investigator go goes to investigate a case or suppose this is a crime scene the first thing which he has to do is to protect the crime scene. Protect the crime scene, then it includes so many other things, whether the crime scene is indoor crime scene or whether it is the outdoor crime scene. If crime scene is the indoor crime scene, then the, matter, uh, then the method of the investigation may differ from the outdoor crime scene. The searching method will, uh, will differ. And Accordingly, here, as you can see, there is a lot of blood and on the terrace, there are drag marks. So for the police or the IO, this is the first responsibility. Before he enter into the crime scene, he should not, he should not manipulate, destroy any evidence. And when he enter, when he enter in the crime scene, he should not leave something which belongs to him which belongs to him. Dear friends, the scene, the crime scene which you are uh, watching here, this is a photograph of Arushi murder case. This is a secondary crime scene. As I said, there is a primary crime scene. There is a secondary crime scene. There is original crime scene. There is a uh, staged crime scene. Primary crime scene is the crime scene where the murder took place. Secondary crime scene is the crime scene where the dead body is disposed of. And original crime scene, as I said, the original crime scene, a dead body where it is murdered, there it is found, it is the original crime scene, and somebody is hanged, somebody is killed, and the body is hanged, then it becomes the stage crime scene. So when an investigating officer enters in the crime scene, he has to look, look towards all these aspects of the crime scene investigation, crime scene investigation. As I said earlier, that investigation or establishing crime or connecting the evidence with the crime then proving in the court it is not only ipc crpc and evidence it includes forensic science too and now in upcoming bharatiya nagrik suraksha sahita that is bnss the government or the uh, the lawmakers they are making it mandatory they are making it mandatory that any crime any crime any offense in which punishment is six years or more, 
visit of a forensic scientist or visit of a forensic science expert is mandatory so dear friends the upcoming era is the era of forensic science so anybody if you are hearing this so it will be a good opportunity for all of you to pursue your career in the forensic science because government all over india the government is uh, all the state governments they are going to require a large number of crime scene experts in every police station at least there should be uh, there will be one person who will who will go at in every crime scene with the police officer with the police officers role of forensic science as i i am discussing with you role of forensic science it starts with crime scenes crime scene search crime scene search before you enter before you enter your duty is to protect the crime scene further the golden rule of the crime investigation is that you should reach to the crime scene as soon as possible the longer the delay the longer the delay the stronger the stronger the stronger the reasons the stronger the possibility of destroying of the evidence which you may be able to find at the crime scene forensic science it will help you in location locating the evidence when you locate the evidence you have to develop the evidence so when i say we develop the evidence i will i am talking about developing of the fingerprints developing of the fingerprints because the fingerprints are something which cannot easily be seen wherever there is a possibility you have to develop the fingerprints by a prescribed procedure as it is given in the forensic science forensic uh, in in the forensic science and then you have to follow the procedure for lifting of the fingerprints see, uh, packing labeling and sending it to the forensic science laboratory forensic examination of evidence also includes polygraph test brain mapping narco analysis dna examination photographic superimposition and now if in uh, now a thing which is to be remembered is that every crime is a cyber crime the days are gone the days have gone where we think about the conventional crime now you think of a crime and in every crime a mobile is involved in every crime a sim is involved in every crime the police officer he has to trace the location he can trace the location with your mobiles the moment you switch on your mobile your location will be traced and now there are techniques that we will pinpoint your location we will pinpoint your location and also we can see we can see the time on your watch which you are wearing on in uh, on your hand exactly exactly by pinpointing or by the by the technique which is called as triangulation triangulation we can see what you are what you are doing and uh, yes up <coughs> up dial 112 is very good in this thing digital forensic when we are talking about the digital forensics in digital forensics your section 91 of the crpc becomes very important all your cdrs call data records now the crime and criminal can be can be tracked with the help of your connected with the help of your cdr call data records call data records can be can be summoned with whom you have talked everything can be connected further if your mobile phone if you have left your mobile phone somewhere whatever is there by using the software by using the techniques we can retrieve your data from your computers so the digital forensics becomes another dimension for the forensic science coming era is of digital forensics two so far as forensic medicine role of forensic medicine in establishing crime is concerned concern whether if you are an advocate if you are going to be an advocate if you are going to be a police officer you must have at least the minimum knowledge of forensic medicine and forensic science when we talk about the forensic medicine you must know the modis 
medical jurisprudence how far is medicine will help you if there is a dead body the medicine will help you in establishing identity of the dead body how the medicine will help you in establishing identity of the dead body number one name will not be ascertained by the forensic medicine but yes the methods the ways by which or the methods which are described in the medicines in the books if you as a police officer or you are a, you are a lawyer by using those methods you can 90% locate you uh, 90% ascertain the identity of a dead body estimation of the time of death yes you can estimate the time of death rigor mortis whether the rigor mortis is set or not whether the rigor, rigor mortis passed off further what are the contents of the stomach whether there is fully digested whether there is no content found in the stomach whether there is any food in the stomach which is semi digested if the food is semi digested it means the person has died at least minimum 3 hours before or uh, 3 hours after taking the meal because once a person died the digestion process will stop the digestion process will stop further what is the position of the rectum whether the rectum is empty or not or whether the rectum is fully loaded chambers of the heart whether they are uh, fill, uh, filled with bl blood or whether they are empty position of the trachea in case of suspected drowning whether there is a water found inside the body or inside the lungs whether in that water diatoms are found and if in that if in that water you have found the diatoms it means you can decide the place where the body was where the person was killed if it is a case of drowning or it is a case of uh, drowning death that is whether it is accidental whether it is homicidal medical examination medical examination and the nature of injuries and their effect nature of injuries whether there is a lacerated wound found on the body whether there is a incised wound found on the body whether it is a firearm entry wound whether it is a firearm exit wound and also when it is a firearm it can be decided that which type or what type or what kind of firearm was used whether this is a single barrel gun db barrel, barrel gun whether it is a 315 bore whether it is a 312 bore country made country made pistol whether it is explosive substance or whether it is a bomb whether it is a ied and what are the other things involved whether what are the other things involved suppose if it is an incised wound it means if it is an incised wound it means the injury was caused by sharp and cutting weapon the injury was caused by sharp and cutting weapon sharp cutting weapon similarly lacerated wound hard and blunt object if it is entry firearm entry wound then it is caused by the firearm in medical examination before we send the body for the medical examination now who will giving the who is giving the evidence actually all these evidence is found on the body what is the body body is the corpus and coming to the topic of the session that is the corpus delicti that is the body of the evidence now all the evidence you will get majority of the evidence you will get from the body you will get the types of injuries you will get the nature of the weapon nature of the weapon you use etc etc further age estimation can also be done by the help of forensic medicine investigation how starts investigation can be started in different ways investigation generally we start with 154 where somebody comes in the police station and register an fir when the fir is registered and then investigation starts sometimes it happens that nobody comes to police station and gives the information then the officer in charge of the police station he himself registered the he himself registered the fir which we call somoto fir and it is registered in section 157 red section 154 of the crpc when 
FIR is registered on the basis of the direction issued by the judicial magistrate, then 156.3 followed by the investigation. And then there is a different kind of investigation where the FIR is not registered in 154 or uh, 154. But this is the first information related to case of unnatural death in 174. Now the 174 investigation differs with the investigation of 154. The scope of investigation of 174 is very limited. So what happens? First, we will start with 174. In the 174, we will open the miscellaneous case diary. And after collecting the evidence, after collecting the evidence, after collecting the medical report, if we are having reason to believe, police is having reason to believe that there is a foul play, then the case of 174 will be converted into the case of 154. And regular investigation starts. For the High Court, recently, Supreme Court ha has held that High Court, in exercise of its inherent jurisdiction in 482, has power to direct the registration of FIR. And other than 482 CRPC, in Article 226 and Article 32 of the Indian Constitution, in 226 High Court and in Article 32, Supreme Court, while in their jurisdiction related to the public interest litigations, PILs, they can order registration of FIR. So far as I remember, few years back, the Supreme Court has directed the Manipur government to register FIR in all the cases of encounters and in pursuant to the directions of the Supreme Court in case of e, uh, executed, uh, executed Victim Families Association versus, uh, versus Union of India, the Supreme Court has directed the state government of the Manipur to register FIR and accordingly 1,500 FIRs were registered in all those cases. So not only 154 is the way to start the investigation against, against an accused, there are other ways also to uh, commence the investigation. As I said, different ways of ordering investigation, 154, you come to police station, your FIR is not registered. You have an option to go to the superintendent of police. Superintendent of police, if he took action, is OK. Otherwise, you go to the judicial magistrate. Judicial magistrate, if he has ordered the investigation, OK. Otherwise, revision petition can be filed. If revision petition is allowed, OK. Otherwise, against the revision petition in high court, writ can be filed. And if in writ, in writ, order direction is issued okay otherwise criminal appeal can be filed in the supreme courts so these are the different ways of ordering investigation where one can help and now 154 3 of the cr 154 of the crpc has become 173 of bharatiya nagarik suraksha center bnss 156 3 has become 175 4 and 397 399 which is the revisional jurisdiction of the session court has become 438 and 440 of the BNSS. FIR registered, but investigation refused. In 157 CRPC proviso, officer in charge has power to refuse the investigation. Officer in charge has power to refuse the investigation. When investigation is refused, he is supposed to give, send a report to the magistrate and then the magistrate, if he is having a, he is having an opinion that this is the case where the investigation should be done, he will order the investigation in 159 as of now. Theories of investigation. The investigation investigative uh, in the investigation, for, these are the theories which we will apply. Number one, law of individuality means in every individual he is having its own characteristics like the fingerprints fingerprints of one person will not match with other person dna of one person will not match with other person then its second principle come principles of locardo principles of exchange means when when object comes in contact with some other object it le it leaves its traces like if you come if you uh, uh, if you catch somebody then some of your some of the evidences some of the your traces it will be left on that particular object laws of pro pro progressive 
change. Every anything cannot remain stagnant. Always it goes to some change. You got an injury today, it will change its color tomorrow, and further it will change its color uh, day after tomorrow. Law of comparison. Law of comparison. You fire you you fire a weapon on somebody, and the bullet is traced. There is a particular mark. There is a mark of that weapon on that bullet on that bullet which can be compared law of analysis analysis can be done law of probability and law of circumstantial facts which is also we know that circumstances never tells lie or the doctrine of refs res if locutor and in the last the theory of the investigation that is the sixth key theory of the investigation jisko hum hindi mein kehte hain kab kahan kisne kisko kaise kyon if these are the six keys if these six keys answer of this six case are solved it means the criminal is connected to the crime and he can be brought to the justice crime scene investigation as i said earlier it involves protection of con crime scene photography sketching searching collection of evidence preservation of evidence packaging sealing labeling preparation of uh, docu documentation that is the preparation of the memorandums dispatch of exhibit to fsl and at the same time the most important part is that the preservation of the chain of custody chain of custody is to be maintained if it is found that the chain of custody is not maintained that the entire process goes to heavier and it will give benefit to the accused person search of crime scene these are the crime scene search method one is the strip method second is the spiral methods journal methods wheel or radial methods and the grid patterns depending on the crime scene whether it is the uh, indoor crime scene or the outdoor crime scene whether it is the primary or secondary or whether it the crime scene is spread in long area or in a small area the io will choose its method to search the crime scene investigation in general as you are all aware about it that it starts with invest information then gd entry then fir sending of a special report departure of G departure gd entry then arrival at the scene of crime observation of scene of crime preparation of rough sketch map of scene of crime preparation of memorandum of observation collection of material evidence inquest on the dead body sending the dead body for the post mortem sending the material exhibit to the officer recording of statements of the witnesses arrest of accused taking accused on police remand recovery in 27 evidence act collection of medical and fsl reports writing of case diaries and the preparation of the police report whether it is a charge sheet or whether it is final report now coming to the case coming to the cases this is an fir of a criminal case in up this is as per the old format as you this is original fir this is original fir which you can see here it is prepared in 154 relevant in section 6 8 9 and 32 of the indian evidence act and it is to be proved in the court by the informant and by the police officer who has registered the fir this is the sketch map of rough sketch map of scene of the crime which is prepared under section 157 of the crpc is relevant in section 9 of the indian evidence act it establishes identity of the scene of crime explains relevant facts fixes the place of crime fixes the position of the witness and the material exhibit this is inquest report inquest on dead body inquest this is arrest and recovery memo actually uh, we are not supposed to show the original document to you people uh, but anyhow this is something in this way it is being prepared this is fsl report all the fsl reports majority of the fsl reports are such that it is not visible so it, you have you have to you have to Put, make your all effort all efforts to read the fsl reports it is admissible in 45 of indian evidence act and section 293 of the crpc and the case diary writing as you can see the case diary is a privileged document prepared in 172 of the crpc it is daily record of the investigation contain each and every detail of the case and process to be followed it is a privileged document neither the lawyer accused not their uh, lawyers or agents they are entitled to either to say see the case diary or call the case diary in the court it is the another things by various xyz reasons you will get a copy of the case case diary but not to be disclosed to the court that as an advocate or as a lawyer you got a copy of the case diary so in this way and the last thing comes the police report preparation of the charge sheet or the 
final report in this way in this way police completes its process to establish the crime and to bring the criminal to the justice so i think that uh, uh, the time is up if you have anybody is having any questions i am willing to take the questions thank you so much thank you sir thank you for this uh, informative session sir now uh, in the question answer sessions we have some questions from the participants the first question is what is the significance of a search warrant in a police investigation right so so far as search warrant is concerned that search warrant is taken in those circumstances ki where you are where you are very sure very sure ki that you are going to search at a place at a place where something is found which is very much necessary for the purpose of investigation for example suppose ki search search warrant you are going to conduct the search at the house of a mp or mla so what do you think that it will be easy to search house of mp or mla if you go without warrant if you go without warrant definitely there will be lot of hue and cry and in all the probabilities you will come back without conducting the search and then there is a second issue there is a second issue okay, that if the investigating officer or the police officer is having reason to believe okay, that if he go to the court and try to obtain a search warrant in the meantime all the evidences whatever is required or the thing for which the search warrant is being obtained that particular thing will either be destroyed or will be removed from that place so then the io proceeds for the search of the place without warrant so search warrant actually it should be taken in all the searches because search is invasion to the privacy it is it is it is permitted but it also it, it also what do you call violate violate or supposed to violate article 21 which is the right of which is right uh, to privacy also so therefore it is advised that in all the cases police should take the search warrant but again crpc provides you that in some cases in 165 you can go and conduct the search without warrant within the jurisdiction 160 sites 66 outside the jurisdiction and search warrant can be obtained in section 93 94 95 and 97 97 there are total six circumstances in which search warrant can be obtained if 91 and 92 is not followed then you can obtain if the invest uh, if you think that the, the purpose of investigation can be served by issuing a general search warrant then it can be obtained or if io has or the police has reason to believe that a place is suspected to contain stolen property or objectionable things such warrant can be obtained or such warrant can also be obtained for any newspaper or book which is suspected to contain contain any article publication of which is an offense under section 124 153ab295 of the indian penal code and the publication is declared as forfeited by the state government and in 97 which is equal to the writ of the habeas corpus such warrant can be obtained for search of a person wrongfully confined wrongfully confined so please why police doesn't take such warrant why police is reluctant to take the search warrant because in maximum of the cases the time which is being taken in granting the search warrant it will result into it will result into the concealment of evidence or the destruction of destruction of the evidence therefore the police officer goes with 165 instead of going with 93 94 or 90 95 or 97 as the case may be so this is the significance of the search warrant but as a trainer we always say that you conduct the search only with the warrant but in practically practically thank you thank you so much sir uh, next question from the uh, shashwat uh, and he asks is it high time that uh, lawmakers should put a sanction on contamination of crime scene which is very common in most crime scenes sir it is in the chat box 
ओके सो सो फार एज क्राइम सीन इज कंसर्न क्राइम सीन इज कंसर्न नाउ द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ होम अफेयर्स हैज टेकन इट वेरी वेरी व्हाट यू कॉल सीरियसली द जनरली व्हाट हैपेंस कि व्हेनेवर देयर इज एनी क्राइम whenever there is any, any crime before the police arrives before the police are, arrives the crime scene is crime scene is totally contaminated crime scene is totally contaminated everybody is coming everybody is going everybody is entering the entering the crime scene even the police officers they are not sensitized to that much of uh, what do you call extent that they will go to the crime scene as soon as as soon as possible of uh, following the golden rules of crime scene protect crime scene protection and the crime scene search but now in bnss in upcoming bharti nagrik suraksha uh, prakriya center or uh, what do you call criminal procedure code which is upcoming then there is a there is a provision there is a provision in law itself that in all the offenses in all the offenses where punishment is 6 years or more visit of crime scene officer or the forensic scientist is mandatory so government has taken it very uh, very seriously and that's why a new law is a new law has already been introduced and the provision is there so therefore in upcoming in upcoming time i think in every police station there will be one forensic scientist or the crime scene expert thank you sir uh, the next question uh, what is the importance of forensic evidence in solving crimes what is the for importance of forensic evidence forensic in, uh, evidence yes sir as you yes. forensic evidence number 1 the report of the forensic scientist is admissible it is admiss it is an opinion number 1 45 uh, 45 indian evidence act then it is admissible into 93 the forensic scientist need not come to the court unless called unless called or unless his qualification is in question that he has given an opinion he has give, given an opinion which is uh, for which he is not qualified so far as the forensic science is concerned i will tell actually the time is less there otherwise there are a lot of stories where the forensic science has helped a lot in police to establish the time and connect the criminal with the crime for example in banaras in banaras long time back when i was a lawyer when i was a lawyer and i was practicing i uh, i had an occasion to present our i case before karuna shankar misra he was the session judge at that time and he was also the session judge in varanasi and in first of his is kind he has used the technique the police has used the technique of photographic super imposition photographic super imposition photographic superimposition a, a skeleton was found skeleton was found and by the photographic superimposition the identity of the victim was established and the person was accused was sent to the death that was the uh, sentence to the death that was the first case in up where the forensic uh, forensic science forensic photographic superimposition technique was used in solving the crime secondly if you remember the famous case of lucknow madhumita shukla hatyakand in madhumita shukla hatyakand when the post mortem was done when the post mortem was done and the body was given for the last rite last rites in the meantime the post mortem report reached in the superintendent police office lucknow and the superintendent of police at the time he went with the post mortem report and suddenly he realized that there was a blunder happened actually madhumita was pregnant actually madhumita was pregnant he stopped he stopped the last rites immediately brought the body back brought the body back sample was taken from the embryo from the embryo for dna analysis dna was matched and it plays a pivotal role in getting the accused punished for his for his crimes so with these two examples you can understand the importance of the forensic science forensic evidence yes. next thank you sir thank you for this uh, session now the time for the uh, formal vote of thanks on behalf of the entire fdp team and faculty of law integral university lucknow i convey my deep regards to your today's 
lecture, sir. And it is very informative, uh, very knowledgeable, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Once Thank you so sir. much. Thank you.